How's it going you wonderful villagers, it's Jay and in today's video we are celebrating 20 years, yes 20 years of Animal Crossing. Two decades of paying off a money hungry raccoon and building lifelong friendships. So in today's video we're going to look at how the series came to be with a little Animal Crossing history. Let's do this. Nintendo have pioneered many incredible games like your Mario, your Pokemon, your Zelda, your Metroid. Each of these games has a very clear goal. You play as a hero, you have, you've got a baddie, you have to save the day. It's a very easy concept to grasp. With Animal Crossing, there's a different sense of freedom and a more looser goal. You end up in a small village populated by adorable animals and end up roped into doing odd jobs to pay off your landlord. Ultimately, paying off your debt is probably the overarching goal. However, how you get there and how you do it is really down to you. Fish, pull weeds, help your neighbours decorate and explore. It's such an open concept that according to Splatoon and Animal Crossing producer Hiyashi Nagami, it was very difficult to explain to promotional staff on how to promote it. Nintendo even found it difficult to pen a catchphrase given how each player's journey could be so different. The creator of the series, Kachuya Aguchi, explained how he drew from personal experiences when he moved from his hometown of Chiba to Tokyo to start working for Nintendo as a graduate. When working on Animal Crossing years later, he wanted to draw on these experiences, being away from friends and family, trying to start your own adventure. Speaking to Edge magazine back in 2008, Aguchi said, When I moved, I left my family and friends behind. In doing so, I realised that being close to them, being able to spend time with them, talk to them, play with them, was such a great and important thing. It was this feeling that brewed up in the original Animal Crossing and still very much embedded in the more recent New Horizons experience two decades later. The odd letter from your parents on special occasions, but you're really, really left to fend for yourself under the watchful eye of a certain Tom Nook. In the original game, players could fill up to four houses in one town, with each human villager having a house, money, and their own adventure. The main draw from this, rather than making it strictly single player, came from how Iguchi played games with his family. As a busy bee at Nintendo, he would often get home late and wanted to create a game that the family could play together, even if not playing at the same time. It's kind of like a shared space for adventure. Speaking to Gamma Sutra, Iguchi said, So this was something that the kids could play after school and I could play when I got home at night and I could be part of what they were doing whilst I wasn't around. And at the same time, they get to see things I've been doing as well. Multiplayer continues throughout the years with real-time visits way back on the Nintendo DS with Wild World and even integrations with the Wii message board in City Folk. Years later, we're still very much visiting each other with New Horizons allowing up to seven other visitors to wreak havoc on your island. And during the pandemic, it's been incredibly fun to play all these mini games, experience birthdays and fashion shows and general hangouts from a teeny teeny Nintendo Switch console. Beyond the game's concepts and ideas, one of the most interesting things is today we are not we are not celebrating the release of the GameCube version, but in fact we are celebrating the release of the Nintendo 64 version. Many people, me included, didn't know that the game started life on the Nintendo 64 as a 64 DD experiment. The game started its life as Animal Forest instead of Animal Crossing, developed as part of the 64 DD add-on. Both Iguchi and Nagami wanted to create something for the 64 DD and came up with various different ideas. That and with Iguchi's personal experience it was moulded into Animal Crossing. The 64 DD had so many amazing new features that inspired Nintendo game designers. You had a real-time clock, internet connectivity and even a little drive to insert rewritable discs. It was a powerhouse of possibilities but unfortunately didn't quite take off and Animal Crossing was ultimately released on a Nintendo 64 cartridge that had its own clock inside the cartridge to really keep the game's unique selling point. The decision to keep a clock in the N64 version and the GameCube version paid off massively for Nintendo. The game received a critical acclaim across the board. Fans love the whole idea of real-time exploration and it's something that's been maintained throughout the years and into Animal Crossing New Horizons. 
And aside from communication in time, one of the other elements carried forward in every single Animal Crossing game has to be the distinctive art style. And discussing the series last year, Nintendo's designers mentioned the balance of realistic and stylized, with things like trees and grass molded in such a distinctive way so they don't, they don't distract from the more decorative things, little objects and of course the villagers and your characters. What's so interesting is just how much of Animal Crossing is drawn from real life, yet presented in such a very distinctive and unique style that's remained consistent throughout the years. And that is a little story of how Animal Crossing came to be. Personal experiences, a longing for family and friends and communication. It's such a special and incredible game and I can't believe it's 20 years old. And if you love Animal Crossing, and I'm sure you do, be sure to check out our exclusive fan designs with designs voted for by you. Links are in the description below. A big thank you for all your support. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button. If you want to see more Animal Crossing videos, we have a playlist below. And also be sure to subscribe. And a big thank you for watching, and we'll see you lovely villagers in the next video. Bye-bye.